Hi guys and welcome to this week's episode. Today we have a prize giveaway, we have a Terrascape filter bag. Stay tuned until then and you can figure out how you can win this fantastic camera filter bag. Now, the main part of the episode, I got my hands on the Canon M6 Mark II. What a bloody crop sensor camera. I absolutely love it. So a big thank you to Canon Ireland in UK for sending this out to me. I've really enjoyed my time over the last week and a half shooting it. Now, I did a, I met Kira from Canon Ireland and what I do is I'll send a link to that up here. Uh, so you get to see me chatting to Kira and asking her about the Canon uh, M6 Mark II and also the Canon 90D. Now, this camera itself, it's a 32.5 megapixel camera and it can shoot 14 frames a second. Wow, that is unbelievable. You have to admit, that's better than the 7D Mark II. And if you really, really think about it, this is a 7D Mark II in a mirrorless body. That's what I think anyway. Now it comes in at only 468 grams and it can shoot 4K video uncropped. And it's also got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So what did I use it for? I sat, shot a variety of different subject matters. So I went down to Killarney on a thing called the deer rut. So that's the mating season when the deers and uh, female deer, male deer, I don't know what they're called. Uh, they get jiggy with it, you know? And the sounds that you will experience from the deer rut is absolutely unbelievable, so. Video, yeah? I was using it with a 150 to 600 art lens, or contemporary lens, which is really, really cool. Very long focal length. And I got to shoot the deer, so uh, I was using short 14 frames per second, and it sounded exactly like a 1D Mark II. And it's just <laughs> class. Um, so my experience of that side of things was really, really good. I also got to use it for product photography. So what I did is I set up a simple little home studio setup on my kitchen table. I used a yoga mat and I laid it out and I set it up the tripods, got some, an octobox, and some backlighting and so on and so forth. And I got to shoot with that also. And the results from it were really, really good. And also what we did is we set up a home uh, portrait session so I used a backdrop and Taylor my daughter uh, modeled for me in a variety of different ways so I got some really interesting shots and I used a variety of different lenses so I used the 18 to 55 the kit lens that you get with the camera which is it's okay it's a grand little kit lens that you could use uh, perfect for vlogging for your video and um, but other than that for stills it's not super duper brilliant it's It'll get you by. So, but like you can use well, the adapter so you can get uh, the M to EF adapter and it's really, really good. So you can adapt your Canon uh, 1635, which we're shooting on right now, or any art lens that you want, uh, particularly the, the 105 Boca Monster. This is my favorite lens of all time. I absolutely love it. It's a beast of a thing. Heavy as feck, man. I mean, you want the muscles to uh, be carrying that around all day, but I really enjoyed shooting with that, especially for portraiture. I mean, it's just so crisp, so clear. So for the product photography shots that we talked about a second ago, we used a macro lens for that. So it's a Canon 100mm 2.8 IS lens. So we got some interesting r results with that. Now going back to shooting with a crop sensor camera was a bit of a, uh, a mind feck really, you know, uh, because it's 1.6 times the crop. So when I was shooting down in Killarney with the deer rut, uh, 150 600, shooting at the far end of the barrel at 600, became a 960 mil lens. So I got that X reach. So it can be your advantage, and sometimes it can be a disadvantage, especially for shooting in a tight studio setup like it was with Taylor. So I was shooting away, 
with the 105 on, which I love to shoot for my portraits, but because it's a small kind of, it's a sitting room, we did it in a sitting room, it was very, very tight. So that's going to become 168 mil of a lens. So there you're fighting against the, the reach. So you want a bit, something a bit smaller. So a 50 mil lens will turn into an 80 mil. So it'd be uh, ideal for that situation. But I don't have a 50 mil lens. I don't particularly like them. Uh, well, the Canon 1.2 is really, really good, uh, especially the RF mount one. So maybe I might buy one of them in a few weeks or in a few months or in a few years whenever I have loads of money to buy one or Canon you could just give me one <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen uh, but yeah the portrait was really good I loved the fact at how sharp the images were coming out especially for a crop sensor camera and if you come back to the the talk the topic again what's the difference between full frame and crop sensor body on pictures wise and it's getting to the stage where you can't really you don't even know the difference in what we're shooting on at this stage now there's also other functions that you can use for this camera the time lapse mode is really really good and what we do like when we got to this location where we we're shooting for the time lapses it was really cool and a monkey could do it now we've come to the outdoors to shoot king john's castle for the time lapse feature in the canon m6 mark ii it's, oh, it's over here, sorry, this is the ESR. So the ESR is shooting on the Rhino slider now. It's my first time lapse with this properly. But anyway, back to this. The time lapse feature on the uh, M6 is really an ease of use time lapse tool. So if you're not used to using them, basically punch in the time you want to shoot and set it up, press go, and Bob's your uncle. It's really, really easy and very intuitive. Now, I've been let down by the light. It is quarter past 11 a day. I know I'm not looking for a, a and an academy award for photography on this time lapse but it's just to show you how we actually use it and it's, it's just fantastic it really really is good now we're at the clear glens and we've hit a few problems already and it's going to be a bit hard to test the m6 mark ii in this scenario so i'm going to have to look at a few other things that i don't normally do now, I went down this kind of gorge and the water is so tenacious, it's so violent that if you fall in your goner and the spray from the water is running about 100, 120 feet. So even if I do break out the camera on a wide angle lens, there's gonna be spray all over the lens. So I can't photograph down where I really want to go. So I've came a bit further up on the east side and I'm gonna go up this pathway up along here and see if I can find something a bit, a bit more interesting. Now, the, I'm video recording on the M6 right now. Uh, it's shooting 4K 25 frames a second, which is fantastic. Uh, really looking forward to seeing the capabilities of this camera. Unfortunately, it doesn't have C-Log, and it's only something that I've really recently got into shooting C-Log, and since I've had it, I don't want to go back. It's absolutely amazing, and it enables you to edit your video to in a way higher degree that you could ever even po be possible before. So I'm missing the C-Log a small bit. I know this is a, a bit of a cheaper camera than the Canon EOS R, but nonetheless, it's still a very well capable uh, camera. So I'm looking forward to editing the video on this camera also. So look, let's just pack up now again and we'll head up this pathway and see what we can find to photograph. All right. So I've came to this certain spot where I can photograph this waterfall. Now I know it's very loud here. And I've gotten a few shots and I've shot it on the 16 to 35 F4 IS lens, which is an L lens, so professional grade quality. I've also switched it over onto the 18 to 55, the kit lens, to take a few shots also. So I'm still recording on video on the Canon M6 and I'm shooting on a very flat profile to see if I can grade it later. So what I do, this part of it's gonna be flat, and now I'm gonna grade it. I'm gonna see the difference in quality and what you can get out of an image in the video sense. Video-wise, it doesn't have C-Log. Uh, is it a deal breaker? No, it's not. It's, uh, you're not gonna get massive files when you're shooting on C-Log. At the moment, we're shooting on C-Log 10-bit to an external recorder on the Ninja 5 Atomos. Um, but if you're shooting small video, this is perfect for you, especially vloggers, because of the articulating screen, it pops up the whole way. I love that. That is wicked. That's really, really good. Uh, kudos to Canon for that. Um, it does shoot 4K on craft, which is really good. And it can shoot 100 frames a second at 1080p 
Oh my God, that is brilliant. I love that feature. And uh, I had loads of fun shooting that in the clear lens. Now it does come with an EVF, but you do have to pay extra for it. And this is the older model one, I think. There is a newer model one. I think it's the DC2. It's really cool. And what it does, it just slides on just like so, as you can see. And um, you can then use it as an EVF. Now the EVF, I wasn't mad about it. I wasn't loving it. Maybe it's just this older model one. Uh, when you're looking at the pictures, when you're about to take the picture, it's just, it's not up to date like the ESR. The ESR is fantastic. It's a great camera. It's my favorite camera that I have. But, and I have to differentiate. I have to understand that this camera is slightly cheaper than the, the ESR. Uh, well, a bit cheaper, about half the price. And, but no, this is, it, it really punches a pack, this camera. And it's cheaper than the 90D as well. So this is basically a mirrorless version of the 90D. And in my eyes, I prefer the Canon M6 Mark II over the 90D. Now, having shot with the 90D, so I can't exactly give you the full seal of approval. Don't get me wrong, the 90D could be much better than that. But at the moment, I do love the Canon M6 Mark II. And it's something that I think you should get. Now, that's my opinion of the Canon M6 Mark II. I hope I haven't rambled on for too long. Maybe I have. I'll have to cut this. I don't know, maybe. But look. Let's not beat around the bush. Didn't I say we had a competition? A Terrascape filter bag, okay? If you want to win the Terrascape filter bag, all you have to do is like this video. You've got to comment down below and you have to share on social media. So that's all I should do, very simple, and I'll select a winner, a winner at random. I don't know how all these other YouTubers do it, but I'll figure it out and I will do it. And I'll announce the winner on the next video and I'll send it anywhere in the world to you guys. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this episode this week. If you've liked, uh, if you want to enter competition, uh, comment below, do what I just said. And uh, look, if there's anything you'd like to add, just comment below and kind of add it. And I'll do my best. I always do. I answer everyone's comment as much as I can. So yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. And I'm going to see you in the next episode. All right, guys. Ayo.